So now we've got ourselves in a situation where people, the majority of people go to eat, they go to the grocery store, and they go to the restaurants, and they would be hard pressed to know what to do to provide for themselves. But, and that's why we need to push ourselves so much harder to realize that when we have a dependency, a food dependency on someone else, they control us, all right? When our pantry is empty and we don't know, you know, we can have a bag of flour and we can have some water and we can have a pack of butter, but if we don't know what to do with it, um, or if we can have, if we have garden seeds and we have no idea how to cultivate those and, you know, whether it's something quick like lettuce, spinach, that you can grow fairly quickly and start providing something on your plate for yourself, uh, all those things are useless. You know, some of us who are in our, our 50s think, wow, well, you know, why start changing at this point in time in our lives or why start considering it? Because you know what? You have no idea how long you're going to be on this earth and you have no idea what your needs are going to be and you have no idea who's going to come into your path that is going to need some knowledge that you have, have gained, some wisdom that you have gained. Good morning guys. I am sitting here in a quiet cabin, which is a rarity for me. Um, <clears throat> Ron is off getting some blood work done that was ordered over two weeks ago. <laughs> he's just a little bit slow here, but at least he's getting it done. And um, the younger boys are up visiting the older boys for me for a minute, so I had a little bit of quiet time and thought I would shoot this video because I've been wanting to talk to you folks about this. This is an old stutter video. and. I want to share my thoughts why I feel that anyone, if you aren't already or haven't uh, considered or haven't considered starting it, that you should, if you're over the age of, if you are a grandparent age of, of any age, okay, so you can be, as, you know, let's, let's, let's say that you start grandparenting at 40, but I'm looking at around 50 or above, why you should be a homesteader of some form. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, when we had the financial crisis in mid-2000s, a lot of people who'd worked hard for their retirements, who'd worked hard for some security uh, later on in their life, lost a lot of it. And some never regained it, some did. Uh, you know, and that's, that's a cycle in, in our history in the United States. And since the First World War, that man has developed his own security system. And that is, you know, we've talked about this briefly before, it is the retirement, we think we're going to be all set. But time and time again, history has dictated that that is not the case, that no matter how well we think we have our plans laid out, no matter how much money we have in the bank, no matter how much of this we, we have prepared, uh, life happens, things happen, and you just can't control it all. So I am saying, and I, I deeply feel and believe this, that we as a society get ourselves in a situation where we have no choice but to be dependent on certain things that the government offers. Now that's whether that's Social Security, and I know, I know the argument, well, you paid into Social Security. I, get, I understand that, okay, I get that. But Social Security is never enough especially with the medical bills of today, okay? So when you are on a fixed income, and fixed income, Social Security is a fixed income, all right? No matter how much you've paid into it, it's still a fixed income. That seldom is there enough in the Social Security on the average individual for it to meet all of their needs. And then you get penalized <clears throat> um, in Social Security if you start have, if you have an income. I know that you can earn so much depending on your Social Security and it not you not be deducted from the Social Security, but it's, you know, it, it rarely, it's kind of, it's the scheme. You've got to find that, that equal balance of how much can I earn without being hit for what, you know, I'm already getting a month. And then, of course, there is, you know, what if you do earn anything extra, or if you have anything extra left from your Social Security, oftentimes it has to go to meet the shortages of Medicaid or Medicare um, or additional uh, prescriptions. So my point in this is, um, as we age, and whether you live in um, a highly developed city, in apartments or townhouses or sky rises, or whether you live in a um, 
community, a neighborhood, or whether you live in a rural area, if you have not considered ideas and thoughts of homesteading, then I think that's it needs to highly be part of your thought process. And why why would that be important? Because as soon as we mention homesteading, we think of animals. And I'm talking so, solely right now about um, food production on a vegetable and fruit mentality. You know, I know a lot of people get supplemented on their social security with some form of assistance through the government with food. And it, it, most, most of the people that are supplemented in that area aren't supplemented enough. But then what happens though is it becomes an entrenched part of their life. And I'm not, this is, this goes for all ages. I'm not just focusing, I'm not saying that it just happens when you're older, but right now I'm focusing on older folks and why you should consider being an old stutter. Um, back in my grandparents' time, my grandfather was a farmer and my grandmother raised a garden and my grandfather raised animals and it, the part of that fed their family. Unfortunately, those that was an era during the Depression into World War II and post-World War II where we had such uh, industrial advances and marketing had become so heavy that the housewives and the, the husbands, fathers of that time, um, were looking at all the neat and new things that were on the market to buy to make their life easier. And they started to push aside the old traditions. And those traditions seldom were taught to the mass of their children. Now, there were children, yes, that those things were taught to. But, they, but the majority of the mentality of our nation started to change at that point in time. And they weren't taught to peoples from my mother's generation, which meant that when I came along, my siblings came along, she had nothing to offer us in that area. And what I've reclaimed is what I've reclaimed from the few that have trickled, that trickled down through that were able to take those traditions with them. Or for those that decided, you know what, I, know, I don't understand how that the traditions for all the decades before worked, but I'm going to find them and I'm going to apply them to my life so that I can share them later. So now we've got ourselves in a situation where people, the majority of people go to eat, they go to the grocery store and they go to the restaurants and they would be hard pressed to know what to do to provide for themselves. But, and that's why we need to push ourselves so much harder to realize that when we have a dependency, a food dependency on someone else, they control us, all right? When our pantry is empty and we don't know, you know, we can have a bag of flour and we can have some water and we can have a pack of butter, but if we don't know what to do with it, um, or if we can have, we have garden seeds and we have no idea how to cultivate those. And, you know, whether it's something quick like lettuce, spinach, that you can grow fairly quickly and start providing something on your plate for yourself, uh, all those things are useless. And if we give that power to another entity, and that would be our government, and that would be the marketing and Keep in mind, you have to understand that these things are complex. If you, don't, if you don't understand it now, you need to look into it. How complex these big corporations are with the government. Now, we hear all these government officials saying the evil corporations. The reality is these government officials, the majority of them, are getting their pocket lined by these evil corporations. They're called lobbyists. They're there for a purpose, and it's to get things to go the way that they want them to go. That's why our, we, we have so little connection to our food. That's why people that are older than myself who, you know, we look at and say, oh, those, you know, great grandmas and grandpas. And we assume that they should have knowledge on how to provide for their families without going to the grocery store. Don't, because it was taken away from them years ago. And they were content with it, okay? A lot of people from my generation and much younger than me are content with, they're okay with not having a connection to their food. And that's dangerous because that gives the power to somebody else. And, you know, I, we've talked a lot about old setters and why it's important that maybe they should be considering it or that a lot of people are considering it. But we want to encourage more people to consider it. And again, it's not a matter of even getting up, moving from where you're at, but being productive where you are at right now. And that could be um, small-scale gardening. That could be bucket gardening off of your balcony, your terrace. 
Um, it could be even, you know, if you can't bucket garden, if you're not, you know, if you don't even have the space for that, finding the best resources for bulk and then processing that food so that you have some backed up in your pantry for later needs. Uh, window gardening, even if you don't have a balcony, window gardening, growing some greens, lettuce, they have lights that you can get now that you could sprout your own foods. And, it, you know, yeah, it's, it's not um, a big three or four course meal, but it is very healthy and it produces something on your plate that somebody hasn't given to you, you've given to yourself. I think a lot of things too is when we think of homesteading and gardening, we, you know, we've talked about this, we think of this big huge scale. And we don't have to have, um, you know, a half an acre garden. Not that it's not, not that if you can't do it, that that's not great, because that is great. But when we, when we think that we have to do it to this size, it, it slows us down. If you could produce um, a salad for yourself during the summer months, four times a week, just contemplate the freedom that that gives you compared to not producing anything for yourself the entire summer. You know, we have seniors who are dumpster diving right now. And I, I you know, I, I, I've seen, I've seen one YouTube channel that dumpster dived and I saw one um, thumbnail. I didn't watch it. So I don't know a lot about dumpster diving. All right. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. Because they people do, you know, we are very wasteful. We have a very wasteful society. But when you have to dig for through garbage, not because it's it's a challenge or not because it's it's something that's exciting. You know, your your pantry, you've got a nice pantry stock, and you think, okay, I'm going to add more to it. But when you have to, when you are going hungry and you have to go and you have to dig through somebody's garbage, there's something wrong with the mentality of America. We, our seniors deserve better. They deserve to be prepared better than this. And our government is not, does not fix the problem. It adds to the problem when we become so dependent upon them that we can't produce something for ourselves. And again, this does not mean that you might, you might not be in a position to produce every food item that you intake for yourself, but you can add to it. During World War II, uh, there was a big push in World War I for victory gardens because the food that was being process, pr produced was going to the military. Many of the, there were shortages in our country and in many other countries. And our government at that time encouraged us to be resourceful, to produce something that we could put on our own table so we weren't depleting the resources of our nation. Well, our nation now um, doesn't have a resource problem. In fact, we have an overabundance problem. And most of what it produces, unfortunately, is not fit to consume because it's saturated in chemicals. Another, um, oh, it, it goes as far back as the Civil War, but it really got pushed heavily in World War II and more, more chemicals were being produced. When we, when we consume the food that's available, most of it through the supermarket or through what the government offers, um, it affects our health. So therefore, that's one reason why America has so many health problems and why we have so much medical needs. And we're not, we're not looking at the core of the situation. We're looking at um, fixing, masking the problem at the moment instead of fixing the problem permanently. If we empower ourselves on whatever level, and I'm talking whatever level, that is something that somebody cannot take away from us. Knowledge is power. The more you learn to provide for yourself in whatever situation you are in, the more power you have. Okay, And I believe fully, that's why our, our food system is the way it is, because if they can take power away from you, they can control you. And it doesn't matter what age. But as seniors, you know, we, and I'm, I'm one year away from officially being a senior, but we've lived a lot of years. We've gained a lot of knowledge, but if we haven't absorbed the wisdom in self-production of some form, we have too much dependency then on, on something that was supposed to be a limited control. 
<clears throat> you know, um, Social Security started as a way to help people in World War II seniors. It had a, it, it was a good idea. But what happens now with Social Security? You got, and it's paid into. It's held over the senior's head. Well, I'll be the first thing, you know, well, the, the, those evil Republicans, they want to use grandma's money. Well, I, I hate to break it to anyone that believes that, but it's all politicians to the core that they use it as a bartering chip to control people, just like the food help. They're not empowering people to be empowered. They're controlling people. They're, you know, I'm not, not all politicians are evil, okay? But there is a a majority that use those as controls. Some people really just want to help. Um, but if we really want to help, we need to give an ability to be independent. You know, uh, this is a whole nother video. I wasn't sure which video to do first. Old stutters and some uh, self prep or the video of if I ran the SNAP program. Um, so I, I will stop there with that because that goes into that video. But this, I just want, you know, want to encourage older folks who feel like they have no way to develop anything. What could you do with a pack of seeds? What could, what could you give to yourself with a couple dollar packs of seeds and a bag of soil in some form of container? Um, you know, granted, yeah, you're not going to line your pantry with it, but you're giving yourself some knowledge and some independence that somebody can't take away from you. Um, you know, some of us who are in our, our 50s think, well, you know, why start changing at this point in time in our lives or why start considering it? Because you know what? You have no idea how long you're going to be on this earth and you have no idea what your needs are going to be and you have no idea who's going to come into your path that is going to need some knowledge that you have, have gained, some wisdom that you have gained. Um, and it's like building that bridge, building that bridge for the person who's coming behind you. It doesn't take a village. I, you know, there's that, that mentality that it takes a village to raise a child. That is wrong and that is evil, all right? But it does take mankind to support mankind. To, and I, it, some people could say, well, isn't that the same thing? Well, no, it's not because... If you if you give a man a fish and sometimes he needs a fish because he's down and he's out to feed him, but then give that man the wisdom on how to continue to fish. Don't just give him a fish and walk away and say he's good. But give him the fish, get the immediate need taken care of, and then give him that wisdom so that he can take care of himself because there is a pride that comes into us when we provide for ourselves, when we are able to do some provision, maybe again, it's not, it's not a perfect world and we can't always provide everything for ourselves and there are immediate needs and there are needs that need to be met. But if we're obtaining certain things that we can use later, obtaining certain knowledge that we can use later, then that takes the dependency away from somebody else or some entity having the power over us. And um, I don't, you know, I, I'm not saying as far as government help, I, I'd be hard pressed to know one person that has never had to turn to, to some form of aid. Okay. That's not what this is about because aid is there and should be there when it is needed. But we get too comfortable utilizing needs and we turn them into permanent parts of our lives. And then it lessens our self-will. It lessens our pride. It's, and it's, we learn to live with a demoralized um, feeling. We have to fight sometimes to get ourselves out of those situations, especially if they've been entrenched in our, ourselves for our entire lives. And a lot of people, you know, they see Social Security and they see that they're either going to struggle or they're going to have to embrace some form of government help. 
And though that might be true, and it might be necessary, it isn't written in stone. And it doesn't mean that, that even if you have to do it now, it doesn't mean it has to be that way down the road. Um, imagine, imagine how much cleaner our elections would be if there were less people that depended on the government for things. I mean, if they can't hold something over your head, they can't put fear into your life. And that is where I see I've been talking for 20 minutes, so that is where I'm going to end it today. But I uh, hope you all chew on this. I hope that if you're not an old stutter, that you certainly consider some options uh, for doing whatever you can do. Pick up a new skill, get that pack of flour, make yourself some bread. Um, if, it's, if you want to be totally purist and you, know, you don't want the, the carbs, then grow yourself some sprouts, grow some greens. Do something that empowers you to provide for yourself where the rug cannot be pulled out from underneath you, regardless of your circumstances. Next time, um, when we do an old stutter in video, we are going to talk about either the SNAP program or some ways that as older folks, maybe with some disabilities, you can raise a garden that is not painful, you know, down on your hands and knees, some options that we have there. So, all right, we will talk soon. God bless.